Hey guys, I wanted to do a quick video for you all today about a very poisonous plant that's actually spreading through a lot of the United States nowadays, and that's poison hemlock. And it's a plant that if you just touch it can give you rashes and burns, and if it's ingested by either people or many livestock, it can actually be fatal. And so I wanted to do a quick identification video since we recently found some of this on the property that we'll be removing, and kind of telling the difference of what, first off, how to identify it, and what is the difference from a close relative of it, Queen Anne's lace or wild carrot, which a lot of people, since it is a wild edible, uh, a lot of people will eat wild carrot and Queen Anne's lace and use the roots. Um, and some people have actually had health issues because of confusing poison hemlock with Queen Anne's lace. So I wanted to do a quick uh, tutorial on how to ID the plant, and I have a side-by-side -side comparison. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. All right, so right here, I've cut down some Queen Anne's lace. And we can see that the flower is just starting to come out. And it comes out in an umbrella style fashion. Now again, this is the good plant. This is a plant with an edible root, much like carrot, and that's how it gets its name, wild carrots. It's actually part of the carrot family. And the leaves are very carrot-like. And so it comes up, branches out, and has kind of the umbrella flower. Now I've cut this now so it's a little wilting, but that's the Queen Anne's Lace. Now what it's often confused with is this plant here, which is poison hemlock. Now poison hemlock, when it's in bloom, there's another plant there, is actually looks like this over here, where we have the white flowers in a cluster pattern growing out from the main portion of the plant. And as you can tell, the leaves look very similar to Queen Anne's lace. You have that telltale carrot family structure. Now in some areas, poison hemlock will be a perennial, but in most cases it's a biannual, which means it'll come up one year, and then the second year it'll flower, and then the plant itself will die back. Now these ones have already flowered, and you can tell there's another poison hemlock growing up there. But these plants have already flowered and they've started to go to seed. Now had these been flowering and like those ones over there, we would just cut them down and almost chop and drop. We'll let them decompose where they are, let the toxins break down in the decomposition process. Uh, however, now that these have gone to seed, we don't want to cut it down and the seeds will dry out and then reseed the area. And so we will actually bag this and send it away with the trash. And we'll make sure we double, triple bag it to make sure that no one's coming in contact with any part of the plant. So let's get on to the identification portion. I have my handy tool here to keep from touching the plant. I can touch this one. Well, let's get these side by side because this is a poison hemlock that has grown out and has fallen over in the wind along the road. And there are four or three, three or four primary ways that you can identify poison hemlock as opposed to Queen Anne's lace. And the first one is if you see the flowers. And not the flowers themselves, although you can identify them that way, but primarily you see these, at the base of the flower, these trident green leaflets. And they come out as little spikes and they encircle the entire flower head. Now if you look at poison hemlock, it does not have those same spike tridents. And so if you don't see any tridents at the base, then you're probably dealing with poison hemlock. The other way you can actually identify it by the leaves is the leaves will have these small hairs on them, on the base and on the underside of the leaf. And it's hard to see on this video, but small trichomes are what they're called. It's a plant defense mechanism. And if you look at the base of the leaves of the poison hemlock, you won't find any trichomes at all. It's completely hairless. And the same thing goes for the stem. On the, try to get in focus, on the Queen Anne's lace, there are trichomes and hairs all along the stem. And on the poison hemlock, it's completely hairless. But the biggest telltale for poison hemlock on how you can tell them apart is right here with the main stem. Poison hemlock has these purple blotches 
all along the main stem and up the plant. So these purple blotches really is kind of your telltale giveaway. And if you wanted to be sure, you can use the other methods that this is indeed poison hemlock and it's a plant that I should not touch. Definitely should never ingest or include in a recipe and then dispose of it from there. Some of the more severe cases of poison hemlock, you will get uh, blistering and reactions such as that. But in general, it seems to be that people just get a rash from it. Much like if we scour the ground here, I'm sure we'll find some right in here. We have a poison ivy plant. Much similar to the poison ivy where if you touch that, you'll get a blistering effect on your skin. Poison hemlock is another reaction plant. And so that's your ID tip for the poison hemlock plant. It's uh, most famously known for killing Socrates. And so the things to avoid. This is Frenchy Powell with Permaculture Northeast. Uh, if you have any comments or questions on to how to ID toxic plants or how to dispose of them, go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section below. And otherwise, we'll catch you around.